Whether we're concerned about skin cancer, clinical conditions like dermatitis, or we want to explore the benefits of cosmetic treatments, dermatologists can help. And I'm joined today by Dr. Mei Chow. She's a dermatologist with decades of experience, and she's affiliated with Franciscan Health. This is the Franciscan Health Doc Pod. I'm Scott Webb. So, Doctor, it's so great to have you on. We're going to talk about a few things today, but mainly we want to talk about when is it time to see a dermatologist. And specifically up front here, I want to talk about skin cancer and, you know, what are the signs we should be on the lookout for and then what should maybe prompt us to see someone like yourself? Number one, it depends on your skin situation. Have you ever had many sunburn? Have you had a family history of skin cancer? And have you have a lot of moles, lumps, or bumps on your body that you're concerned with? Let's start with family history of skin cancer. Your father, your mother, your siblings, or relative who have melanoma that you need a yearly check, even start at their young age. I am talking about as young as puberty, okay? And especially, second thing is you have sunburn have not used sunscreen in the past, and have many bouts on repeated sunburn that you need to see a dermatologist. Say, how frequent I see that dermatologist? If you had a history of family history of melanoma, you need to see a dermatologist at least once a year. When is the best time to see a dermatologist? Nobody ever remembered. Did I see it one year ago, <laughs> two years ago? Yeah. The best time is your birthday, okay? Let's say your birthday is in March, March 1st. March 1st, I will need to see a dermatologist to check my birthday suit. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's a good way to remember. I love that. Is every year around your birthday to check your birthday suit, okay? The second thing is you say, how do I know whether I really uh, have skin cancer. If you develop any moles, any lumps and bumps, A, B, C, D, E, there are five things to know. A is asymmetry. B, irregular border. The border, you know, look like a devil grabbing you, okay? Not regular, not smooth. C, color. Very, very dark, blue, black, brown, all different shades in, of color in one mold. D, the size, diameter. Usually, if it's bigger than the size of a pencil eraser and changing fast, E is evolving, changing. If it's changing, evolving quick, then you're really concerned. Rule of seven. Anything over seven months, you really must see a dermatologist, Okay. Uh, seven days, it go away. Oh, probably it's an acne. Acne bump comes and go. Okay. If it's seven months, it still persists and getting bigger. You must take care of it. Seven years or longer, probably it's a lipoma and some fatty tumor. That probably is harmless. It doesn't change or assist. It stay there. Okay. So that's rule of seven. Now, what are the most common skin cancer we know of? Number one is basal cell carcinoma. Very, very, very common. And almost everybody who has sunburn will experience basal cell carcinoma. How does it look like? It looks like a little pink bump. Sometimes it bleeds a little bit on the center. Okay, that's one of the most common kind of skin cancer. The next one is squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell is mostly located on the head and neck sun exposed area. And they are not as smooth like basal cell. Okay, we just remember a name. Okay, so squamous cell is a little more invasive than basal cell. Okay, it's not life threatening. However, it can be very aggressive. If untreated, the squamous cell carcinoma can grow very fast and very large. It can get into the blood vessel, cause bleeding, may have some serious complication from spreading. The most dangerous one is melanoma. Melanoma can be deadly 
even with the advance of medicine now, we do have treatment for melanoma. But I do believe prevention is much, much better than treatment. Prevention means you know, using sunscreen, using sun protective clothing, and check with a dermatologist frequently. Does that make sense? It does, yeah, and a lot to unpack here. I'm, I'm just making sure I'm trying to lock these things in. The the rule of seven, A through E, really great advice. When to see a dermatologist, and also, as you say, like to have your birthday suit checked out. So just rather than trying to remember, because none of us can, yes. just do it on or about your birthday every year. So yeah, uh, really great advice, very helpful. Mm-hmm. Also, want to talk about some of the clinical reasons uh-huh. why folks may come to see a dermatologist, be that dermatitis, dry skin, whatever it might be, maybe you can go through those as well. Okay. It's also age-dependent, all right? Okay. When you are very, very young, usually as eczema, you know, little baby, real children, they have very dry skin, very ex- eczematous skin, the eczema. Then once you get puberty, then become acne, okay? Very, very common. Now, teenager always come in, that's the second most frequent visit is acne for teenager. Acne is not just a disease or condition of teenager. Acne can be from cradle to grave. Yeah, it really can. Okay, it's yeah. changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that people, maybe you're too young to remember this comedian called W.C. Field. Mm, okay. I am just a bit, yeah, a little bit too young, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, you see some of the older men would giant nose, you know, with a lot of pimple on the nose, okay? Even Bill Clinton had rosacea. That means it's a form of acne, but later on, acne rosacea changing into um, acne-like breakout on the face, okay? So acne and rosacea is one category that I see on all ages. Now, psoriasis is another big, 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 big topic. We call that inflammatory diseases of the skin, like psoriasis, eczema, and all kinds of different conditions that cause inflammation of the skin. Okay, That is a big, big topic all by itself. Now, as we get older, over 30, over 40, we start to see some wrinkles, we start to see uneven pigmentation, some brown spots, some age spots on our face. Then patients come in to see me for cosmetic reason, okay? And a lot of them professional. They want to look younger. They want to feel better about themselves, okay? They want to have a better skin. Then they come to see me for cosmetic reason. And cosmetic is another big, big topic that we can discuss. It is a yeah, it's a massive topic, and I'm just just thinking about what you're saying here. Is is I'm 53, and so I look in the mirror and I see some you know, broken blood vessels, you know, around my nose, and some brown spots and things like that. And I look at it and I say, there's no reason for concern here, like medical concern, but maybe it would help my self confidence. Maybe it would make me look a little bit younger. And yes, let's talk about that. Okay. That is the majority of my 40, 50 years old patient. Not only women, men. I have a lot of executive. Okay, they just want to feel better about themselves. They come in. They say, Doctor Chow, can you fix my broken blood vessel on the nose? I say, I'm more than happy to. I'm going to explain to them. Number one, the broken blood vessel sometimes is caused by the sun, sometimes is hormonal. Sometimes is the inflammation of the skin that cause all this problem. We do have a combination of treatment using laser. The laser can shrink down the blood vessel and also topical medication, which involve topical antioxidant and also topical retinoid to help to decrease the blood vessel or eliminate the blood vessel. Brown spot is another thing. We can also use laser to treat brown spot. We can use chemical peeling, a peeling agent to get rid of the brown spot. 
and we can also use topical medication. So there's a combination treatment to make the skin better. The buzzword for me is always anytime we can use lasers or robots. Yeah. You know, that's definitely going to interest me even more. I want to have you talk about neuromodulators. Yeah, Botox. Yeah, so that's something that's probably very popular, right? Actually, this is nothing really new. I started using uh, Botox um, neuromodulator 30 some years ago. Okay, it started actually in the last millennium, 1980s when we discover that uh, this is actually a muscle relaxant. We use that first in patients who had uh, strabismus, the people who have squinty eye, and also in patients who had cerebral palsy. Just think of the neuromodulator basically as a muscle relaxant. So when your muscle relax on the forehead, you don't wrinkle. When uh, you put the muscle relaxant in between the eyebrow, you don't have the number 11 line, okay? You put the muscle relaxant around the eye, then you don't have crow's feet. So it's a very, very common practice for dermatologists. And we do that. Uh, We are actually the first one who started it 30-some years ago. And after many, many studies, they finally approved it about 20 years ago. Now, as we have more baby boomer, okay, baby boomer is defined as anybody who is uh, in the late 50 or mid 50 all the way until (laughs) the 70s, uh, 80s, yeah. So you can use Botox. There are three kinds of neuromodulator now available on the market by the trade name is Botox. This port and Juvel. Okay, I just use a generic name called botulinum toxin. I just use a generic. So botulinum toxin is very useful in terms of treatment for many many skin and also medical condition, not just to treat wrinkle. In a good hand, if you use it right. You truly relax the muscle, make you feel better. If you do it right and don't overdo it, uh, you put too much, you froze in the face, that doesn't look right. If you adjust the appropriate amount, everything had to be appropriate. Yeah. And don't overshoot it, that you, you will get a tremendous benefit from that. And I think that that's one of the things, you know, when we see stars, movie stars, TV stars, we often notice where it feels like they've just gone too far with these things, with the cosmetic part of it, you know, whether it's actual plastic surgery or Botox, whatever it might be. And I think that's such an important point that you're making. It's something we call body dysmorphic syndrome, okay? Yeah. I believe they truly depend on their look to to sell. I mean, to be in the business to the point that they become very insecure, then they constantly go to the plastic surgeon. Some of the plastic surgeons, every time you do a procedure, they charge you. They will never refuse. Okay? <laughs> no, that's the, they won't, right? That's the unfortunate <laughs> thing. Now, as, yeah. now, for me, I do what is right for the patient. Do the right thing. I actually tell the patient that, I think you have done enough. You will look strange. You won't look like yourself. I want you to look natural. Be honest with the patient and just tell them what is appropriate, what's best for them. I love that. It's so great talking to you. You Do the right thing. Encourage patients to do what's appropriate. And it's so great to speak with you because we've talked about, you know, from medical like cancer and the rule of seven and those types of things to clinical and cosmetic. I mean, you're just an endless source of information. This is wonderful. We do have to wrap up, though. And as we do, what takeaways do you have for listeners? When is the right time to come and see Dr. Chow? When you are concerned about a condition, okay, if it bother you, if you say, I got to do it, then that's the time you must pick up the phone and call and make the appointment, okay? I know there's um, there truly is a shortage of dermatologists, there's no question about that. You may have to wait some time, but you now we do the best we could to accommodate the patient. 
and it all depends on what's the urgency. I always will stay late, whatever it takes to see patient who had cancer. That's that's a given, okay. And then you say, you know, for cosmetic reason, for whatever reason, I will try also to accommodate it. But you no, know, everything will take time to do. I mean, any procedure, I t- I will take time. So you can only see so many patients a day. I do believe one of the problem is access, A C C E S S access to a doctor, not only dermatologist, I believe it's all doctor. We truly do have shortage, and no question about that. Now, there are two official websites. One is ASDS, American Society of Derm Surgery. Okay, that is most on the cosmetic and surgical side. And AAD.org is all medical, clinical diseases side. Okay, if the, the public is encouraged to look at the AAD.org and to check uh, who is the board certified dermatologist in your area, okay? Because the best thing is to look at the official organization. They will direct you to board certified dermatologists. Yeah, and I did not know that. Of all the things I've learned today from you, I did not know that there was a shortage of dermatologists. It is such a fascinating field. The range of things that you do with your expertise covers is really amazing. I've really appreciated this conversation. Thanks so much. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you. For more information, visit franciscanhealth.org and search dermatology. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and be sure to check out the full podcast library for additional topics of interest. This is the Franciscan Health Doc Pod. I'm Scott Webb. Stay well, and we'll talk again next time.